everyone. I would like to introduce you to my topic. So my topic is approaches to reconstruction of oral maxillofacial defects based on virtual surgical planning. My name is Madalina Banarescu, and as uh, Professor Hegi said, I'm an international uh, student. So I am a PhD student at University of Medicine and Pharmacy from Iași, Romania, and also a PhD student in the Department of Dentistry at Semmelweis University. And my vision is to improve the life quality of patients with oromaxillofacial defects by improving the aesthetic and functional outcomes in reconstruction techniques by applying up-to-date scientific results. A few words about virtual surgical planning so we can understand it better. So in the first Im image, we can see that we can plan the surgery ahead. And more than that, we can create some surgical guides that uh, can uh, be used to harvest uh, the bone or uh, the actual uh, osteotomy that we have to do. Or even we can use it in more advanced techniques like uh, prosthesis and customized prosthesis for uh, the patients. Uh, so these are my two topics, and we'd like to, we would like to investigate the intraoperative surgical navigation over conventional surgery in the management of zygomaticomaxillary complex fracture. It's a systematic review and a meta-analysis. And the second topic, we'd like to investigate the reconstruction techniques in maxillary defects with and without CAD CAM customized uh, osteotomy guides. <clears throat> So uh, this is our uh, first topic, and as a bit of a background, first, uh, what is the link between the virtual surgical planning and intraoperative surgical navigation? Well, after we do the surgical planning in the virtual surgical planning uh, program, we upload it in the intraoperative navigation system, and we can assist the surgery in real time. So, uh, so far we know that only uh, in the year of 2017, uh, we have 7.5 million new cases of facial fractures, and we can see the prevalence of zygomaticomaxillary fractures in maxillofacial trauma, and uh, a number of these patients, we know that they have a remaining mid-facial deformity after conventional surgical treatment, and this might be because in the conventional surgical treatment, the assessment of the accuracy is made by the subjective uh, assessment of the surgeon. So this is why our aim is to assess the accuracy in treating zygomaticomaxillary complex fracture using intraoperative surgical navigation. So our question is, is intraoperative na uh, surgical navigation more effective in treating zygomaticomaxillary complex fractures? And to answer this question, we chose a PICO format. So our population would be zygomaticomaxillary complex fractures undergoing conventional surgery. In the intervention group, we would use intraoperative surgical navigation, and in the control group, uh, the uh, surgery will be without the intraoperative surgical navigation. And as a primary outcome, we'd like to assess the accuracy, which will be measured by linear deviation of the most prominent point of the zygomaticomaxillary complex. And for the secondary outcome, we'd like to investigate the operative time, mouth opening, and amount of, amount of bleeding. And our hypothesis is that intraoperative surgical navigation is more effective than conventional surgery in treating zygomaticomaxillary complex fractures. Uh, and as a clinical implication, we'd like to improve accuracy, reduce the operative time, and also reduce the risk of complication. Here you can see our systematic search. It was made in three uh, databases and it was made this month. And you can see uh, so far our flowchart of uh, selection. So far we have uh, six articles for uh, eligible full text and I'm waiting for my uh, collaborator to finish also his selection. For, our uh, for, for the second topic, we are investigating reconstruction techniques in maxillary defects with and without CAD CAM customized osteotomy guides, also a systematic review and meta-analysis. For the background, we know that maxillary defects can be caused by congenital, tra congenital diseases or trauma or oncological cases, and also the defects of the maxilla affects uh, also speech, swallowing, mastication, and even cosmetic disfigurement. And with the help of uh, customized guys, we can be more precise during osteotomy and graft harvesting. So our aim is to assess the accuracy in reconstructing maxillary defects. 
Our question is that if uh, CAD CAM customized osteotomy guides are more effective in treating maxillary defects, we also chose a PICO format. Our population is maxillary defects undergoing reconstruction, reconstruction surgery, surgery. Our intervention is using CAD CAM customized osteotomy guides and the control is without uh, those guides. And uh, like in the first topic, the outcomes are the accuracy and operative time, ischemia time, and this time we have the aesthetics using visual analog scale and patient satisfaction score. And our hypothesis is that CAD CAM uh, customized osteotomy guides are more effective in reconstructing maxillary defects. And our clinical implications are improving accuracy, aesthetics, and functional results. Uh, here you can see our uh, preliminary uh, search. It was in three databases and we have uh, almost uh, 3,000 results and we are still working on it. Uh, in the summary, uh, here you can see again my two uh, pending projects and we plan to submit the first project in July uh, next year and the second one in uh, September next year. Uh, I would like to leave you with this thought. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Thank you for your attention. How do you measure the accuracy in both of your uh, projects? So uh, in, the first, uh, in the first project, we will use the uh, superimposed images. So we have the uh, virtual planning from before the surgery. And then uh, in the articles, they, uh, the patients ha have the CT after the surgery and they superimpose the, uh, the images. Okay, thank you. They superimpose these images to which image? So I assume that not for every patient we have previous CTs as well, right, before the trauma? or only these patients are included? So uh, they superimpose the images with the virtual planning that was done. So we have the unilateral defects. So the defect is basically reconstructed in virtual surgical planning program by mirroring the healthy side. And this is our, our ideal goal. And that goal is compared with the actual uh, post-surgery result and they superimpose the images and measure the differences. We have lots of time. so. We have time for speculation. So you are an international student, and now you do two meta-analyses. And probably, I mean, after one year that you will return to Romania, and in the meanwhile, I mean, do studies with us. So what are the perspectives? So do you have a chance actually to, to turn this to a kind of clinical registry or, or, or clinical trial? Do you have already have some plans with your Romanian kind of tutor? Yes, so there are uh, some plans. So our goal for studying actually virtual surgical planning is so that we can apply this knowledge to uh, design patient-specific implant, implants for uh, uh, reconstructing maxillary defects. Uh, and um, this is an idea so far, but uh, we, I think we can actually uh, do this because we have uh, uh, at uh, our disposal, uh, uh, at our disposal, so uh, some three D printers, uh, and we would like actually to uh, assess uh, their function, uh, their functionality, and maybe we can work with some uh, physician to measure, for example, uh, where uh, they can fracture the most, or where does the uh, uh, lose, uh, where do they lose the uh, uh, the screwing. Uh, uh, there is some kind of analysis that is uh, called uh, fine, uh, finite uh, analysis, and uh, we can test the implants to see where they where they would break normally, so we can design them design them better for the patient, so it doesn't actually happen in in a real situation. So that would be our plan so far. <laughs> I know this is a meta-analysis, so you have to use what you have in the literature, but uh, these studies, are, are they using the same reference array or landmarks for the superimposition? Because obviously you don't want to superimpose the fracture there, you want to superimpose some stable area, and then you can measure the region of interest. That's, are yeah. they homogeneous or standardized in the literature? Yeah, so uh, the studies, they are using different landmarks. So most of them, they are choosing uh, 
three or four landmarks in, uh, in, in each study. And this is why we mentioned the most prominent point, because this is the most common landmark that uh, we could find. And also it's one of the most important one, because it, it's literally in the, in, in the middle of the face. It has a really, impact, a really great impact on the aesthetics. Uh, and we also have uh, some other common landmarks, but we left them for the secondary outcomes because they are not so commonly used. And for the second meta-analysis, uh, it, it's actually a thing we need to search because for the, uh, for the zygomatic maxillary complex fracture, we can use some landmarks, but for the uh, maxillar uh, defects, there are uh, more um, type of outcomes that we can measure in the sense that some, they me some measure the accuracy by uh, referring to the occ occlusion, some measure the accuracy uh, only by superimposition and they calculate the average deviation uh, so they don't use landmarks and uh, there are others that use landmarks. So now uh, we have to uh, find some common ground so we can uh, choose one for the primary outcome. Mm -hmm.